and is just under 1 billion years ago. Cyanobacteria had just recently taken out the carbon, leaving behind only methane in the atmosphere. Fortunately, a methane-based atmosphere is still warm enough to heat the Earth. Unfortunately, the bacteria is like, fuck that, we didn't exist only to take out half an atmosphere, and so they kicked the shit out of the methane atmosphere, replacing it with an oxygen atmosphere, giving life the opportunity to become more abundant. I except for the large majority of life at the time that found oxygen poisonous. Unfortunately for all life, including the cyanobacteria, the sun was way smaller than today and couldn't warm our planet, causing the earth to literally freeze over. And that's where we get into today's episode, the Cryogenian period, a period of Earth's history where it had not just one, but two major glaciations and ice ages that froze the earth completely. So that's where we're getting into today's episode on Down the Line. Hey everyone, I'm your host Pete. Welcome back to Down the Line. And before I jump into this, I did want to talk about two sources that I found really interesting. One of them uh, was from, it's a documentary called the Australia Time Traveler's Guide. And it doesn't really have to do just with today's episode, but kind of my idea for this project in general, to do like uh, an you know, extensive timeline of everything that's happened. And that does a really good job of that, and it goes even farther than where we're at right now. So you guys should check that out. If you're not from Australia, you can't watch the videos or the documentary. I've tried, and I, I don't know how to uh, bypass that. So if you guys find out, feel free to let me know. I'd love to watch it. But on their website, they do have a timeline that you can actually go through everything. And then the second one is a YouTube video called Miracle Planet. And it's about, it's about today's subject, the Snowball Earth. It's a really good uh, documentary. It's about 45 minutes long. And uh, you guys should check it out. It's, it's really good. It gets more in-depth. You know, then I think maybe even this episode will get. So I just wanted to give you guys those little sources that if you guys wanted to check out more than just, you know, what I was, what I'm going to talk about in today's episode. So let's get into it. The uh, Cryogenian, it's a geologic period that lasted from 720 to 635 million years ago. It forms the second geologic period of the Neoproterozoic era, preceded by the Tonian period, that was the end of last episode, and followed by the Ediacaran, which is next episode. Sturdian and Minoan glaciations occurred during the Cryogenian period, which are the greatest ice ages known to have ever occurred on Earth. And these events are the subject of much controversy. I guess the main debate are between whether these glaciations cover the entire planet, which would be the so-called snowball Earth, or a band of open seas survive near the equator, which would uh, term it slushball Earth. But, uh, who the fuck cares? I mean... Either way, I guess the whole debate is between whether or not it was in the equator. So it's like most of the planet was for sure covered in ice. So I don't, I don't understand like the whole, like who's arguing about this? It doesn't really seem like it fucking matters. In contrast to most other time periods, the beginning of the cryogenian is not linked to a globally observable and documented event. Instead, the base of the period is defined by a fixed rock age that was set at 850 million years ago until 2015, when it was changed to 720 million years. That's crazy to me, because that wasn't even that far away ago. I mean, that was, that was two years ago from when I recorded this. It makes me wonder, in like, in 10 years, if it's just going to be a completely different number. But currently, there is no consensus on what global event is a suitable candidate to mark the start of the cryogenian period. But a global glaciation would be a likely candidate, so that'd probably be the first one, the Sturtian. So now I thought we'd get into the climate which, as you can tell from the whole snowball earth thing, it's going to be fucking cold. <laughs> that, could, that could be it. I could just call it cold. But the name of the geologic period refers to the very cold global climate, obviously, of the cryogenium. Characteristic glacial deposits indicate that Earth suffered the most severe ice ages in its history during this period, which were the first ones I was talking about, the Sturtian and the uh, Miranoan. The cryogenium is generally considered to be divisible into at least two major worldwide glaciations, and the Sturdian glaciation persisted from 720 to 660 million years ago. 660, sorry. And the Maranoan glaciation, which ended approximately 675 million years ago at the very end of the cryogenium. So now we'll get into the paleography, which is kind of like the uh, land. Before the start of the cryogenium, about 750 million years ago, the cratons that made up the supercontinent Rodina started to drift apart. That was the very end of the last episode. 
Penthalassa began to form around the former supercontinent. Penthalassa being a super ocean, which is fucking dumb. It's just like, like there's one continent. The whole, all the land is in one continent. So there's no multiple oceans. There's no Pacific. There's no Atlantic. It's just one ocean. So I guess it's, it's just a super ocean, which is whatever. <laughs> the Kratons possibly later assembled into another supercontinent called Panotia in the Karen. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce that. They're all like, <laughs> these supercontinents have like the most, and I've talked about that before, like Tolkien-esque names. But anyway, so now we'll get into the cryogenian biota and fossils, which is just the life at the time. Uh, each snowball earth increased the oxygen in the atmosphere almost to what we have today, leading to newer and more advanced life forms. So they found fossils of testate am amoeba or arcelinda, which are single-celled alien shell creepy ass things which first appeared during this period if you look up a picture of them they do look really weird there's and the life at this time was so different than what we have today they literally all look like aliens <laughs> also the oldest known fossils of sponges and therefore animals make an appearance uh, it suggests that other eukaryotes and some protozoans were around during this period protozoans being a kind of proto-animal so this is where we first see the first kind of those animals where it seems like these like little like microscopic or very very small seem to be kind of swimming in the ocean and i think that's where life lived at this point too was in little parts of water if it was like around the equator that wasn't completely frozen where life was able to like bacteria and you know little life like that was able to live under the water and then these sponges and stuff like that so how did the snowball earth end in twice i mean it seems like it would be kind of like hard to explain how the earth was not just frozen twice but also unfroze both times well it turns out geology continues despite the frozen earth specifically plate tectonics and volcanoes volcanoes which usually release carbon into the sea but couldn't because the world was a giant ice skating rink were forced to release their carbon into the air warming up the planet and possibly unfreezing the earth both times so we can thank volcanoes for the earth not being hell literally frozen over <laughs> After all the ice melted the first time, all that was left was what became the Sturtian Glaciation. And the second time the earth froze, what was left became the Maranoan Glaciations. What followed afterwards were a series of unusual weather patterns, like hyper-hurricanes, with the strength to take out Florida today. So, you know, watch out Florida for earth to freeze over, then, you know, melt, only to be wiped out by hyper-hurricanes. That's, that's pretty terrifying. <laughs> But despite all this, and possibly the most important part of this episode, some life survived, mostly in little water pockets kept heated and fed until the time when ice, the ice would melt and the survivors could leave the oceans and adapt and evolve into more advanced life. The earth had tried to wipe us out, and only the strongest had survived. If that plan failed, it was life's chance to evolve. And I think that's, that's kind of the most important part in this episode. This is the first kind of test of life besides probably the oxygen catastrophe where the earth wanted us gone and you know we're stubborn we, we weren't going and it only just gets you know more and more evolve for us i mean we just as the episodes go on from here we just keep getting more and more advanced so this is the time for life now that's going to be in the next episode in the idiot karen so i really hope you guys like this episode it was a lot of fun making it and i'll see you guys next time